Hey, good evening. We are here at the west coast of Florida, in sunny South Florida. We're having a wonderful time, a time of uh, spending with the uh, family. Uh, so we are excited to uh, be here uh, this, uh, this evening. I mean, just a change of scenery, as beautiful as you can see in the back. Uh, we're having a wonderful time uh, with our uh, family, yeah. with our immediate family. Yeah. yeah, we're having a really great time. Hallelujah. So this is more of an informal type of table yes, talk. Yes. So don't you like the change of scenery sometimes I, I, that I we sure do? I sure do. And yeah. I, a lot of times in life you need a change of scenery. So yeah, you know. yeah. Not so formal. So no. So it's a lot yeah. more informal. It uh, is. Uh, Pastor and I love the weather down here and it's it's actually really, really warm. Uh, but we're enjoying the time together here. And like he said, there you have it, South Florida. This is the West Coast and we're have so, having such a, such a good time. Uh, we wanted to just mention to our listening audience uh, to invite them to come Amen. to church this coming Sunday and then the following Sunday we're in town for a couple of weeks so uh, Father's Day yes. we want to talk about Father's Day at yes. some point during this word but uh, we want to really encourage you to come for Father's Day it's not this weekend coming up but it's the it's following, the following one. Uh, but uh, I'm bringing a word this coming yes. Sunday I don't want you to miss it Amen. we are in a phenomenal uh, series uh, we are this we month. are and uh wow <laughs> it's, it's is, incredible that we're already in june yeah you know yeah it, it time has flown so very quickly and pastor had such a fantastic message this coming sunday that what we wanted to do is expound a little bit on that and also just keep with the same um theme of yes. faith and uh that's one of faith the faith in the desert yeah faith, faith in, in the, the desert, desert. Yeah. and that's one of the things that we I love to talk about at Word of Faith Global Ministry. So for those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, we are Word of Faith Global Ministries. We're situated in the beautiful city of Miami Springs, Florida, really close to Miami International Airport. And the address there, if you want it, it's 81 Hook Square in Miami Springs. Uh, you can go to our website and get more information there at wordoffaithglobal.org. Don't miss going there and checking out some of the messages that we have. But tonight we want to just uh, go over on uh, a little bit of, of an expounding on the message that you're talking about, but kind of flow with that same faith theme. And uh, that's big for us. At, well, obviously, Word of Word Faith, of faith. <laughs> Global Ministries, and that's... Um, that's the theme in our church uh, is having faith, faith in the Lord. Um, and we're such a, a family oriented type of church that uh, we lift each other up in faith. When someone is in need of that boosting and Amen. in need of that encouraging, we're here. We're Amen. here to help them. Uh, our ministerial team, as well as every single person in our church, we're family. We really are family. You know, it's beautiful Amen. that even uh, uh, last Sunday, uh, there was a situation with one of our uh, church members. Uh, they get out of uh, a church, and obviously I delivered the uh, the message yeah. uh, last Sunday and speaking about faith in the yeah. desert, and they receive a phone call. They were uh, ready to have lunch, and they receive a phone call uh, that one of our members' uh, father was in the hospital mm -hmm. uh, with uh, issues with his heart, you yeah. know, and um, to the glory of God, you know, we, we uh, got in contact with him. We started praying and believing yeah. God, our church family. Uh, started praying as well and to the glory of God mr. Western is doing super good today yeah uh, you know they they uh, 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 had to go in and uh, he had some stents put in three yeah. stents put in yeah. uh, this week yeah. and to the glory of God he's doing great yeah. you know so it was the message uh, they leave uh, from church they're yeah. excited with the Word of God they're excited with uh, you know their faith being uh, right. uh, strengthened and then this happens right you know right but um, but I remember too that the service was so powerful it was Sunday. it was it was to the glory it of God was beautiful you know? people I know came that they have a they had a tremendous time in the altar yeah. and uh, uh, just a time of ministering in the yeah. Word of God even time before of, the word even even before even the Word of God before the word so uh, you know it's important that we talk about faith it's yeah. important that we especially this message especially uh this series that we're in right. uh this month you know uh, faith in the desert we all go through stuff at one point or right. another right. uh there's times that situations that you're going through in your life that you don't understand we we just don't understand yeah. what's going on and yeah. what's the reason yeah. and for why it to happen happened, yeah you know yeah and um we we need to understand that even when we face those struggles even when we face those challenges we need to have faith right uh, we need to have faith and the only thing that we could hold on to is the word of god the promises Amen. that god has given us Amen. and like i said on sunday you know i um 
I, I repeated it so many times because I want to make sure that people get a hold of it. I, I believe that you need to get a journal. Write down in right. a journal. Write down in a journal every time that you have been through something right, right. and God has opened that door, that window of opportunity, has touched a family member, has healed, whatever. Yeah. Because when the enemy comes back, we got to go back to that That's right. You know, journal That's again right. and see what he did then. And he'll do it again and he'll do yeah. it tomorrow and he'll do it the following day or the following year. Right. You know, right. but it's staying in that faith, staying and in the Word of God. One of the things that uh, we always mention too, I mentioned it just a couple of weeks ago, I believe I did um, a Wednesday night uh, live stream service. And one of the things we spoke of is um, just regardless of the outcome. Yes. Regardless of, of what uh, is going to happen, regardless Amen. of what has happened, regardless of whatever the outcome, yes. we still remain in faith. And we still believe that God... Uh, can do everything god god is a work miracle working god amen. and despite amen. Amen. the circumstances amen. despite what we might see with our yes. eyes i know you mentioned yes. that all the time you're yes. very very adamant about that you say it all the time because we you really yeah. want to get that ingrained in in our heart Hallelujah. and in our minds and that's you know sometimes uh, we may sound repetitive with some of the things that we preach about or say or whatever it is or we might we might revisit a series that we did years ago mm -hmm. you know in a different format but still we might revisit that but why because we you know faith comes by hearing and hearing yeah, by the word of god. god and so when we hear the word of god over and over again that's one of the things that i mentioned a few weeks ago is that we need to speak the word of god read the word of god this was the meditating on, on meditating god's word on effectively god's word. Yeah. a message and it just c continue to do so over and over and over again because faith mm -hmm. comes by, by hearing, hearing by and hearing. hearing the word of god there's nothing wrong with uh, reading yes. scripture over and over again out loud that you can hear yourself right and and just continuing to do that because your faith just gets so encouraged and so boosted well, so one of the things that I mentioned on Sunday that, that you heard is uh, what are we allowing our spirit man to hear so good what are we allowing our spirit man to hear right. I mean uh, is it words of faith? Is it words? Right. Of, are there the promises from God? Right. Or are we just listening to the uh, rumble that's going out there in the world and, exactly. and the news? Uh, exactly. We can't hold on to that. Exactly. We got to hold on to the promises of God. Exactly. And just be fed with the word of God daily. Yeah. Daily on a constant basis. Yeah. yeah. It's not when we're in a crisis, but yeah. it's on a daily basis. And you know, it's not so much that we have to be in some kind of bubble. Of course and live, not. live I mean, outside of the world. We, you, we we're just in can't. the world, but we we're can't. not of the world. Amen. Right? Uh, but there's something very important about influences. Of course. Right? Like you said, what what are you allowing your your spirit man to receive? Yes. What are you allowing your ears to hear? What are you allowing? What are you allowing your eyes to see? And that's very important for a, a faith believer and uh, those that walk with the Lord Jesus, because um, you don't want to really. Uh, hear naysayers amen you don't want to and there's a lot of those oh, out there my good you know people can mock us yeah people can say oh you know roll their eyes or right you know like we used to say in spanish Fre huevo, Fre huevo. you know people go yes you know but guess what we're going to continue to stand firm on god's word because amen. god is god to us god is god is amazing god is awesome and god is able <laughs> it's funny because we see those um signs all over our neighborhood God is able. God is able. Right in their in, in yes. their yards, and yes. and I always chuckle when I see that. I go, mm -mm. Amen. Yes, indeed. Amen. God is able. Hallelujah. Amen. We see them all over people's yards. But I wanted to mention before we actually kind of start picking at some of the parts that you talked on Sunday is this coming Sunday. That's one of the things that I'm going to be mentioning or saying because I'm going to be preaching specifically on uh, the twelve spies that went into spy out the land. the land and I won't give it away but I'm encouraging you to come and to hear the message and be with us this coming Sunday um, but it's those naysayers because when see sometimes what happens is that when our faith is encouraged and boosted and you know we begin to really believe God for something and uh, and then all of us and we are really adamant about our prayer walk and our faith walk and then all of a sudden somebody comes in and says otherwise or says the opposite mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we since we are this flesh yes right we are prone to like listen to other people or or allow those naysayers to influence us 
Yeah. And we have to be very careful. And as a child of God, we can't allow that. We can't allow, we can't allow that. that because we have to have yeah. enough uh, a scripture in us. We have to have enough exactly. promises of God in us uh, to rebuttal right. uh, those uh, those naysayers. Exactly. Uh, I mean. We, we have to and that's why we constantly say you know you got to go before the Lord on a daily basis yeah and uh, renew your mind through the yeah. Word of God on a daily basis yeah and we, we gotta be we gotta be ready for everything yeah but and unless unless the Word of God is in you, you you're not gonna have anything precisely precisely no, you know? we grew, we ingrain that in people all the time Amen. and you know it's not like you you don't have to be a pain or a pest to other people you know and try to beat them over the head with a two-by-four because uh, with the Bible because quite frankly not everybody might be on the on the same uh, I hate to say that because it might sound negative, but my, it's, some people's mindsets are just different. Everybody's mindset is different. Yes. So those are some of the things that we wanted to kind of browse through tonight as, as we, you know, do a little bit of dissecting on your on the yeah. message that you Hallelujah. came on on Sunday. But go ahead and share some of the it things that you It is in those mentioned. times, I, I wrote uh, down here, it is in those times of testing when we need to remember the promises of God to infuse our faith, to infuse right. our faith in the valley we all right. go through valleys yeah we all go through storms in yeah. life at one point or another yeah you know uh unfortunately this family went through it on sunday right but we all go through it at exactly. one point or another we all go through uh those those times in our life where we are praying and we are seeking god and we are fasting and we're doing everything that we need to do we're in the prayer uh where we, we have times of prayer we have times of worship and yet it's like we hear a silence mm. But even in those silence, we got to understand that God is doing something. Yes. God is doing something in our so. life. God I is doing that. something in that situation that you're going through. Right. Don't ever think that because there's a silence, like there's a pause, uh, God's not hearing us and right. God's not active. No, right. God's working. Absolutely. God's working. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the thing, one of the scriptures that I that I mentioned was Hebrew eleven uh, six, which which says obviously without faith it's impossible to please right. God. Right. Exactly. You know. Even though things might be silent, yeah. we still have the faith to know that God's active. Yeah. God's doing something. Yeah. You know, I might not see it with my eyes. I might not hear anything. But you know what? I'm, I have faith enough. I have enough faith to, to please God and mm -hmm. know that in the midst of my situation, yeah. I know he's in control. Yeah. yeah. I know he's in control. You know, the Bible even says, we were talking about that the other day too, is that um, Jesus was amazed at the faith. Of, for example, uh, I mentioned that the other day. Is he was amazed at the faith of the centurion. Amen. You know, and it, he just basically said, "Just say the word." Yeah. And just <laughs> just speak say the, the word, word and my servant will all. be healed. That's and that all. is so powerful. Can you imagine? Well, I mean, for well, us just, to walk with that. Look at this. Just just on Sunday, our our, our friend from a, a church, our uh, one of our church members, she wasn't able to go inside to see her father. Right. And when we were talking to her, we said, "You know what?" We just speak the word. Right. We send the word forth. And we don't have to be there. Right. We know that he's in control. Yeah. But we just say the word of God and we believe in our Amen. heart. Amen. And we know that he's taking care Amen. of it. Amen. Amen. He's and taking care of it. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. Hallelujah. We and that's that's something that we have to walk by Amen. on a daily basis because Amen. we will get discouraged. We will. We will encounter desert times. We will encounter times in the wilderness. I mean, the children of Israel, all the way back from back then through uh, even to present time, there's so many things that we can learn and glean from the Bible. But, you know, they were in the wilderness and they experienced some rough times, but God was there. I mean, Hallelujah. God provided for Amen. them supernaturally Amen. in such a supernatural Amen. way each and every time. And it's something that we have to learn by because although um, they may have faced challenges, they faced giants, they faced uh, people that wanted to destroy them and whatnot, um, God was always there. God always supernaturally helped them come through and each and every for one of those situations. And right? provided for them. And provided. Hallelujah. It was their provider all the time. Amen. Uh, Romans number 4, and um, I was reading uh, from chapter number 4, and I started on verse number 13 all the way to 25, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but here we have the story of who? Of Abraham. 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 And uh, like I mentioned on Sunday, a lot of times we read these stories and and we forget that they're men and women of God. Right. You know, just like you and I, flesh and blood, you know, they had feelings just like we have feelings. Right. They had uh, needs just like we had needs. They have wants just like we had wants. Right. You know, so 
uh, think about this for a moment in verse number uh, uh, seven, uh, let me see, verse number eight, I'm sorry, verse, verse number 16. This is why the promise is, is by faith. Listen to the word of God. Romans chapter four, verse 16, it says, this is why the promises is by faith, so that it may be according to grace, to guarantee it to all descendants, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who are from Abraham's faith. That's right. Glory to God. Right. He said, he is the father of us all in God's sight, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He believed in God who gives life to the dead and calls things into existence that do not exist. I love that. Call things into existence yeah. that do not exist. You know, when you preached for our 17 year anniversary at church, the church uh, 17 year anniversary, it was actually precisely on March 21st of yes. this year. Uh, and I wrote some notes down from that message and it was a powerful, powerful message. But um, one of the points that you said, and it goes in line with that is, we can't have logic get in the way of what God wants to do. Glory to God. And, Glory and to God. that's important for us to understand because logic wants our mind yes. and our um, intellect intellect and our know. ability. And, yes. our, and again, what we see, what we hear, you know, those, those elements want to get in the way Amen of what God wants to do, yeah, right? Yeah. And with Abraham, I mean, think about it. This is a, a man, uh, he was a man, he, uh, when God spoke to him mm -hmm. to go out of his father's yes. country, out of his father's land, logic, wa logic would say, right. where am I, where am I go? going to go? Where am I going? Logic would say, if uh, God tells him, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna be a father of many, many nations. nations, logic would have said to Abraham, how my, my wife age? is barren at my yeah. age and my wife you know? is barren yes. my wife can't have children yes. she's been barren for years yes. and when they are old and god you know gives them that promise and Amen. and you know and sarah was like you know it's it's funny because everybody kind of want to kind of wants to you know poo poo on sarah because she laughed uh, but there are many other reasons why she could have laughed and of wasn't course. wasn't course. necessarily that she had a lack of faith maybe it was i mean we'll, we'll probably find out when we see her in heaven but um you know she could have just gone <laughs> that's gonna bring me a lot of joy and yeah. she could have laughed i don't know it, it could have been so many reasons that's not neither here nor there but logic logic can get in the way sometimes of of, of a our, miracle of, a of our miracle. supernatural miracle wow, yeah. of our supernatural that's so well true. you know i'm thinking it has to be this way yeah. and it has to be that way and it's going to happen this day and it's going to happen this hour and god is just up there laughing and saying it's not going to happen like anything that you're thinking about yeah i'm going to do it my way because i'm going to receive the glory we we sometimes want to um uh put our logic and our reasoning behind things where we would say oh all right this this puzzle piece fits here right. so therefore i'm comfortable with that that yeah. to me makes sense but you know what sometimes some of the things that god does and says and promises don't necessarily don't. make a whole lot of sense they don't. to they don't. us they don't they to don't. us they case don't. in point and then and, and to us at that moment exactly at that moment because once you wait a week two weeks or a month or a year you see why in hindsight god didn't open that other door yeah or you know or god didn't do it exactly the way that you thought or provided what you wanted exactly you know so but case in point i was going to say when uh god uh tells the israelites that they are going to enter a land flowing with milk and, milk honey. and honey and yet when these 12 spies go into the land what do they see they see giants they see walls they i mean they see all these huge things that can get in the way and their logic got in the way their unbelief got in the way of what god was promising them that they were going to do that he was going to do and so what ends up happening is that they come back with a a and it's the bible says an evil report yes that evil report was a report of unbelief i was actually talking talking about naysayers you yeah. know i know that has nothing to do with our series this month but yeah. right there you have the perfect example exactly i was you talking know. to uh, uh ricky jr pastor ricky jr about that the other day but that's that that's those those are those unbelief reports that come into the picture yeah and uh and the bible says it was an evil report and guess what they they influenced the entire camp 
everybody. Of course they, they did. They influenced them. Of course they so did. That, and you know what? It, it influenced a person like that. It influenced families. Yeah. Uh, influence. It could influence, influence a, a city. Spread. It could yeah. influence Absolutely. a government. You know. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. it could go across the board. Absolutely. Um, when you are struggling to believe, that is not the time to avoid Christ or to be ashamed of your struggle. We will never increase our faith by not going to Jesus. I love that. We will never increase our faith by not going to I Jesus. I love that. And, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt you with that but because, you know, we just said it a minute ago. We Many of us go through valley situations, dry situations, yes. even yes. in our own prayer walk. I mean, we're, we're being very transparent. We're, we all face things like that. And the, the important thing in that is not to stay there. Not to really camp out yeah. there, right? Not to remain in that uh, desert dry place. Well, that's what I say. The, you know, the desert time is not to uh, pitch a tent or build a house. You exactly. know, we're just going through. Exactly. We're just going through. And and it's it's nothing like you say. It's nothing really to be ashamed of when we are going through, you know, uh, moments that may appear as though, okay, yeah. this is a faithless time set for me, or or uh, this is a struggle, this is a circumstance I'm going through, or this is a dry season, this is a dry yeah. valley I'm going through, I'm ashamed of it, I don't want to talk to anybody about it. No, that's the time. That That is the time to come closer to God, yeah. you know, and, and unfortunately there's a lot of people that struggle in that area, and there's a lot of people that they draw away from the church. Yeah, that's so true. And they draw away from uh, fellowship with right. brothers and sisters that they're like-minded, and that they're going to pray for you, and that they're going to believe yeah. God for a miracle in your life yeah. in the midst of that dryness that you might seem that you're going through and uh, again I'm saying you might seem because God could be doing something supernatural in your life at that moment right. and you're not seeing it yeah. you know because you're drawing away from God yeah but that is not the time to draw away uh, on the contrary that's a time to get closer to God yeah that's a time to get more fellowship that's from your so brothers true. and sister like I said on Sunday you know, that's a time not to miss out when the doors from church are open. That's a time to be in church. Yeah. You know, because you're not going to get your answer at home. You're not going to get your answer sitting at a, at a deserted uh, place. No, you need to be with other brothers and sisters that are going to lift you up in prayer. Exactly. And believe the same way that you believe. And we see the signs all the time when when we see, um, I mean, we shepherd a flock, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So we, we see it. We uh, understand it. It's not that we are um, above anybody else or anything of that nature. Yeah, there's a lot of people that think pastors don't go through anything. Right. And, and that's not the case. And you know, I'll tell you what, <laughs> and we've shared it before over and time and time again with our church family and with our um, spiritual sons and daughters is uh, first we see the signs because pastor and I, I mean, we've been married 35 years. Do you think that we haven't had rough times? 35 years. We've seen rough times. Amen. And, you know, there was a, a time where we, in our marriage, yes. it's n this doesn't necessarily mean that it's an individual situation. Right. It could be a couple situation, you know, or a marriage situation or, you know, whatever, uh, what, uh, a relationship with your son or daughter, mother, father, whatever. But we had a, a difficult time. But you know what happened was that we were away from the Lord. We were. And we, were. we drew away from the church. This was many, many years ago. As a matter of fact, the kids were little at the yes. time. We drew away from the church. We stopped going to church. Mm -hmm. One Sunday became two Sundays. Two Sundays became a month. A month became a few months. And we started to struggle in our marriage. And one day we realized that what the key was that we were not, it's not just uh, getting away from church, but we were moving away from the, Lord. from the Lord. We weren't praying together like we ought. We weren't reading the word like we were supposed to. Uh, we weren't coming in agreement as a couple for things. You know, it was a very difficult time. And that was a wilderness mm -hmm. situation it in sure our was. marriage. It sure was. And not until we uh, realized it, we came to our senses like that prodigal Amen. son. Amen. You know, we went, oh, you know what? We're eating pig's food yeah. here yeah. and and we're not drawing close to God let's go back to our father's house mm -hmm. and the minute that we did that and we took our kids and from then on to God be the glory you know the Lord began to deal with us and the Lord began to just reveal so many things to us he called us into ministry Hallelujah. and here we are you know one thing led to the other but what I wanted to say about that is that we drew away from serving God in our local church and we drew away from the presence of God and that'll get you into trouble it will. It each will. and every time no doubt guaranteed and a lot of people do that because of shame and a yeah. lot of people do that because 
the enemy lies to you yeah, and tells you you're exactly. the only one that's going through that. Exactly. exactly. Nobody else is going through that. You know, uh, they don't, they're not going to understand they're you. They're not going to understand. And that yeah. is not the case. Right. That is not the case. There's a lot of people that struggle and there's a lot of people that uh, need counseling and need help. And you know what? It's out there. Exactly. It's out there. Yeah. But make sure all the time that, like I've always said it, make sure that if you're going to go for counseling, make sure that you get Christian counseling. Yes, that's very important. You know, Christian important. counseling. Very, very important. Let's go back to the uh, 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 scriptures that we were talking about, the, the, the series that we were doing, mm -hmm. uh, Faith in the Desert. Um, there's a story in Mark 9, uh, 24. It says, this is talking about a father, that he had a, a, a son, and his son was uh, uh, possessed, you know, since a very young age uh, by an evil spirit. And listen to what the father says. It says, immediately the father of the boy cried out, I believe, I do believe, help my unbelief. Mm, yes. I do believe, help my yeah. unbelief. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we believe, but we have that unbelief. And, you know, is God really going to do it? Yeah. What is it that I need to do? Yeah. But the, the interesting thing here in this story is that the father cried out to he Christ. Did. He said, I, I, I need help. Yeah. I need help. You know, yeah. and if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be you. Yeah. I can't do it. Exactly. I can't do it by myself. I tried everything and I can't do it my, by myself. My son continues to struggle in that area. Yeah. It's just like the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. She, she went through so much trouble. She went through every single doctor, every single person that could try to help her out according to, uh, you know, that time. And until she met Jesus, yeah. until she touched the hem of Jesus garment. Yeah. And we need to do that. Yeah. The same thing with our faith. We need like to do that. that. I like that point. We he definitely cried out need to, to do God. that. He, he cried, cried out to out Jesus to God. anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's so good. Mm -hmm. That's so good. You know, um, I keep going, wanting to go back to that message that you gave back in the towards the beginning of the year during the church anniversary because you were talking a lot about Paul and running the race. Yes. And it coincided so much with um, with the message for the 17 year church anniversary that we were having uh, back in March of this year. Um, but that that message to me just coincides with all of this that we're talking about because this is a race that we this is a this is a uh, this is a marathon that Amen. we're living right um, and uh, it, it, you said carnal people apply carnal weapons and you also say Paul reminds us that we have a race to run stay in your lane mm -hmm. uh, keeping our eyes on Jesus Hallelujah. right and so um, you know you said this is not a competition right we can't run each other's Amen. race but at the same time we can uh, we can hold each other up during this race Hallelujah. that we're running and with the race this is a race of faith and that's why the fellowship right? is so important yeah with like-minded people yeah yeah this is we're yeah. all in a race yeah at different stages yeah but we're all in a race yeah and I, and I love that uh, that depiction that you did that correlation because um, no matter how difficult the race may be uh, our eyes and our focus always has to be on jesus and again like i said it doesn't necessarily it, it not that it doesn't matter because you know i have to choose my words sometimes because i don't want people to think other otherwise but it's it like i said it's despite what the outcome Hallelujah. might be do you remember Amen. the three hebrew boys where they were um, they were going to get in the fire and, uh, and you know, Daniel then in the diet lions. And what happened was that they had faith regardless yes. of yes. what the outcome was going to be. They yes. basically said to the king, you know, we know our God is able. So be it, you know, whatever. We <laughs> you know. know our God is able to Hallelujah. pull us through and Amen. we're going to shine no matter what. But, uh, you know, we're going to be just fine. But if, even though, you know, it, it doesn't matter because we're, we're still not going to bow to you. We're, we're going to only bow Amen. to God. Amen. We're only going to serve God. We're only going to have faith in God. And that is key in our life. That is just so key because that's that... That's that faith race that we're running. That's that faith race that we have to keep, you know, reaching towards that mark, towards that goal. And how many people right now do we know that you know are struggling in that area? Right. How many people uh, through the whole uh, COVID thing have struggled in that area, in the area of faith? Right. And uh, we, we, how many people, how many, how many even ministries, how many pastors have caved in in their faith? Yeah. You know, in this struggle yeah. that 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 we have gone through, that nobody expected, That's nobody so knew true. about it. You right. know, right? But listen to what it says in the Word of God in James chapter one, verse seven. It says, "Declares, um, this is what the Lord declares: For let no uh, let no um, wavering man think." 
James chapter 1 verse 7 it says declare that a man who wavers cannot receive what God has promised right who wavers right. cannot receive what God has promised for let no wavery man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord right. that's for verse number seven now listen to what it says on verse number eight a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways yeah a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways yeah yeah you know we we gotta have faith in God knowing that he is gonna make a way where it's seemingly he's gonna make a way in the desert in the desert he's yeah. gonna make a way exactly. you know he's gonna make a fountain for you in the desert do you believe it that's so true do you believe God that he's able to do that Amen. you know so in every cir circumstances that we're going through whatever it might be we still gotta stand Amen. and know that God is able Amen. God Amen. is able. Amen. We can't waver. We 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 can't. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, you might be on the mountaintop to today, and yeah. you might be in a valley tomorrow, yeah. or or whichever way it might go. Yeah. But you know what? You gotta remember always, never let go to God. Yeah. Never let go to God, and trust Him that yeah. He will make a way. And you know that wavering can come in line too with the fact that you can begin to speak faith. You know, uh, it's that. It's that um, uh, um, two-sided, two-sided two type of conversation, yeah. uh, or not conversation, but um, uh, oh my goodness, double uh, like de de declarations. declarations. That's what I was trying to say. You know, you're you're making a a uh, claim that you're trusting God, yeah. you're believing God, and then the next thing out of your mouth is yeah. all sorts of doubtful words. God's gonna heal me, you know? but yeah, what? right. Let me have a plan B. Right. No. So you know, just 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 remain strong in His yes. word, and you know, if, if I believe that this you know short word that we're uh, sharing with you today is is reaching somebody because there's got to be somebody out there that needs an encouragement. There has got to be somebody out there that is needing uh, to hear some faith-filled words in your life because you've been in the valley. Uh, you've been in a desert type of situation for a while. And you know, this also helps for people that will be going through a valley situation because we all mm -hmm. go through that, right? So what we want to do is we want to encourage you to keep the faith, right? We want to encourage you to remain steadfast, Amen. remain congregated in your church. And listen, for those of you that are church members at our church, you know, we encourage you, stay connected. Hallelujah. Day. And you know, there's something about fellowship. Amen. It's I extremely mean, important. Yeah, it, it's great to hear we messages can't be a lone ranger. online yes. and all of that. That's all fantastic. Yes. Trust me, we get it. Yes. But there is something mm. so beautiful and supernatural that takes yeah. place because God wanted us to fellowship with one another or else Amen. he would not have created Eve Amen. for Adam. Amen. Right? Amen. So that's really important. Um, so fellowship. Don't don't forget to fellowship as well. Let's continue talking about Abraham. Um, God gives him a promise of his son. And he waited. And he waited. And he waited. And Sarah waited. And they yeah. waited until one day until one Isaac day. is born. Until one day. He is born. The promise is born. The promised child is born. Now think about this for a moment. And that's why I, I continue to repeat, you know, they, they had feelings just like we have. Yep. Uh, they had a heart just like we have. That's right. They had that, that, Flesh that, and blood. that special heart as a father, as a mother, yeah. you know, the child that I wanted, right. you know, glory to God. I get this gift from God. Uh, they, they, they start helping him. He starts growing. He becomes a man. And then God says, wait a minute. I want you to offer him up to me. Talk about not logic. Talk By the way, about Abraham, illogical. go and prepare the wood mm. and prepare mm. the place where it's going to be done. Exactly, I'm going to give you instructions and take him up there. Think about that for a moment. Yeah. And and yet Abraham, in in the midst of everything that he had gone through, every problem, everything that he had gone through, now he has to prepare the wood, prepare the altar. Because he's called to sacrifice his son. Mm -mm -mm. How, how do you how, <laughs> how do you wrap, your mind, how do you wrap your mind about that? And how do you think uh, his faith was in that moment? Yeah. I I believe I believe that um, he probably had a journal. I I, I, I could see uh, you know Abraham having a journal a and and going back to his journal and uh, yeah yeah let, forget about the journal. Let's think about the. Uh, a long, a papyrus, a, a, papyrus, a, scroll. a papyrus and he, scroll, and he's opened it up, and he he says, he, 
but, but wait a minute, Sarah, look, he, did right he here, promise? he did it, right here, he, he promised, promised us, right here, do, do you see this, it came through, and, and do you see